Hi guys, welcome back to Learn City. My name is John, taking you technical drawing. In this video, we'll be talking about the basic drawing equipment, how to use them, and how to take care of them. In engineering drawing, one needs to know the various drawing instruments that are required to carry out a successful drawing, and how to use these instruments, and also how to take care of them. Because when we don't take care of our instruments, at the end of the day, they, get, they tend to get damaged, and with a damaged instrument we will get a wrong drawing so this instrument should be taken care of and in this video i will be taking us through how we can take care of this instrument some of the instruments used in engineering drawing include number one the t-square the set square we have pencils we have erasers we have the french curves and most importantly we have the drawing board yeah, so here yeah, I'll be starting from the most important drawing instrument, which is the drawing board. A drawing board, as the name implies, is a board that is specially made for drawing. It is a specially made board that is just designed for drawing and drawing alone. Drawing boards are made in different sizes, and this size most times correspond with the drawing paper size. In engineering drawing, based on the level you are or the type of drawing you are about to make, you are required to use some sizes of paper depending on what you're working on so these sizes of paper correspond with the types of drawing board we have so we have the drawing board of 23 by 16 inches we have the one of 32 by 23 inches we have the one of 42 by 23 inches and we have the one of 54 by 32 inches so depending on our paper size be it a4 be it a2 be it a1 be it a3 we have different drawing boards that correspond with these paper sizes now how to take care of the drawing board number one the surface of the drawing board should be protected from knocks and scratches don't draw on your drawing board it is meant for drawing alone to prevent holes on the drawing board and also to prevent scratches because when your paper is placed on this board these knocks and scratches will affect your drawing by the time you get to these areas that has been affected by the knocks number two if left on the table your drawing board should be covered with a cloth. The reason for this is, once your board is on the table and you leave, between the short period or the long period of time that you've gone, anything could have happened. There could be dust. Someone might have spilled a drink or anything on the board. So you just coming in with your drawing paper and placing your paper on the drawing board, it, it will affect your drawing work paper or the result of your work at the end of the day. So if your drawing board is going to be placed on a table, ensure that it is covered with a cloth so that by the time you want to come back to it it should be in the best condition as you've left it number three if put against the wall the work surface should face inwards so as for it to remain safe wherever you've kept it number four it should not be exposed to heat or moisture your drawing board should be in a place where there, will, there won't be too much heat and there won't be moist so as to keep it safe and in the best condition for you wherever you'll be using it next. Number five, drawing pins should not be used. If you'll be working on engineering drawing with your drawing board, make sure you use masking tapes instead of the drawing pins. These drawing pins will make O on your drawing board, which will affect your drawing or your engineering drawing work wherever, whenever you carry them out. So masking tapes should be used because they can be easily removed and they don't cause any damages to your drawing board. Now to the second drawing equipment, it is the T-square. The T-square is described by, the, um, by its shape. It is the T-square, so it has the shape of the letter T. And they are used in drawing horizontal lines. The T-square is placed across your drawing board horizontally to make an horizontal line. And we have different sizes of T-square. These sizes of T-square, they correspond to the sizes of the drawing board. We have the 24 inches blade, we have the 31 inches blade, we have the 42 inches blade, and we also have the 54 inches blade. So you pick whichever corresponds to the size of the drawing board you are working with. Now, how do you take care of your T-square? The first is your T-square should not be left lying about in positions whereby they, can, they could be leaned against, against or they could be stepped. You, they shouldn't be lying in bridging positions. They shouldn't be in bridging position so that once they are leaned against it doesn't bend or break and they should not be leaned against the wall because 
once it is eat it could easily get broken or get bent and you won't get accurate lines when using them to draw number two they should be hung on pegs or they should be left flat so your t-square if you want to keep your t-square appropriately make sure you leave a peg up where you can just hang your t-square or better still keep it in any place that it could be left flat so as to prevent it from getting bent or getting broken number three your t-square should not be used as a armor to knock in drawing pins into boards i already advise us against the use of drawing pins instead masking tapes should be used so drawing pins damage our boards as well it damages our t-square when we use it as an armor to knock pins into the board number four the loose blades should be tightened with a very good screwdriver now our set squares our set squares are used for drawing vertical and inclined lines they are triangular in shape and they are made of celluloid these set squares are used to draw vertical lines or inclined lines inclined lines are lines that are at an angle and to draw these lines at their perfect angle we need our set squares and there are different types of set squares for different types of angles we have the 45 degree set square which could be used to draw 45 degree lines we have the 60 by 30 degrees set square this 60 by 30 degree set square draws basically the 60 degree inclined lines or the 30 degree inclined lines and finally we have the adjustable set square this allows you to, allows you to draw any inclined line at any convenient angle or any given angle depending on whatever you are working on how to take care of your set squares it should not be used as a screwdriver or as a hammer your set squares should not be used to tighten screws or should not be used as a hammer to knock your drawing pins into your drawing board number two is clean with soap and water since this does not harm the celluloid body of your set square so one whenever you've used your set squares for a period of time you can just take soap and water and clean it gently so as to avoid the lettering on the set square from peeling off just wash gently rinse them allow them dry off then pack them back into the pack which has been made for the set squares now we should not forget that our pencil is also one of the drawing equipment pencils are made of cedar wood and they have lead compressed into their center this lead are made of clay and graphite and pencils are usually about seven inches long or whichever length because there are various types of pencils now and most pencils have hexagonal shape this hexagonal shape makes it easy for you to hold with your fingers that's why it was made in hexagonal shape and we have different types of pencils but the most suitable pencil for engineering drawing is the HB pencil because it can perform double function of giving both faint lines and bold lines which are very very important when we get into drawing now how do you take care of your pencil the best way of sharpening your pencil is by using an ordinary pen knife using this ordinary pen knife reduces the rate at which your pencil breaks so it allows you to have a pencil that lasts longer and even gives you the perfect sharpness of the pencil when it comes to drawing on paper french curves french curves are drawing instruments that are used to draw irregular curved lines these curved lines are usually not being able to get by using our compass because our compasses are only used to draw circles semicircles arcs and this pair of compasses won't be able to achieve the irregular curved lines that we need from our french curves these french curves are either made of wood or celluloid just like our set squares now how to take care of our french curves number one just like our set squares don't use your french curves as a screwdriver or as a hammer then number two clean with soap and water after being used for a period of time just to make it squeaky clean then we have the compasses compass is a type of drawing instrument specially designed for drawing circles and arcs our compasses have two legs one of the legs has a needle part and the other has an adjustable leg which could be fitted with a pen or a pencil 
depending on whatever we will be drawing with. Most times we draw with our pencils. So we have one leg with a needle and the other leg with a adjustable fit, which we can put our pens inside or our pencils inside. How to take care of your compasses? The needle point of your compass should not get blunt so as to avoid it from slipping off your paper and to maintain a smooth and even curve when drawing. So don't use your compasses to prick things so as to ensure that they remain sharp as ever. And after using your compasses for a period of time, they should be changed. Then we have the divider. The divider, as opposed by the compass, has two legs which are made of pins. Both legs of the divider are made of pins. The dividers are designed in the same way the compasses are designed. But the only difference is that the two legs of the divider has both pins, while the one of the compass has a pin and an adjustable fit for the pen or the pencil. And also, it has a, sp um, a screw attaching on top, which we can use to adjust the width of the divider, depending on whatever we are using the divider for. And the major use of the divider is to transfer distances. Now, imagine on a printed paper, you have a certain distance which you are not certain of. And you don't want to just pick your ruler, start measuring the distance, going to your drawing paper and replicating the distance where it is not sure you might get the accurate measurement with your ruler. You pick your compasses, put one side of the pin on one side of the line and the other side of the pin on the other side of the line. You pick the divider, you place it on your ruler to make sure you get the exact measurement. Then you now take this ruler, place it on your drawing paper and draw the line. Or you just pick the divider, place the one end on one side of the paper, making sure the other end doesn't move. Put the other end to, on the other side of the paper to ensure you are taking the accurate measurement from the first printed paper to the other paper you are drawing on. Then pick your pencil and your ruler and you can join those two points together. That's how to get an accurate transfer of line or transfer of distances with your divider. How to take care of your dividers? You should ensure that the hinge is tight and the pin end should also not be blunt. They shouldn't be used to inscribe on things so as to keep them sharp as always and very, very good anytime you are about to make use of them. You have the protractor. The protractor is always a semicircular shaped object made of celluloid, just like the set squares and the French cups. It is calibrated in degrees and they are used to measure angles. So the various angles you might need to measure are on your protractor. How to take care of your protractor? Number one, it should be properly kept in its box after use. Then you should ensure that it is not lying on the parts where the calibration is so as to avoid the calibration on the protractor from fading out then you can also wash it from time to time after use and make sure you don't wash too much to prevent the calibration from fading off apart from apart from board drawing instruments there are other equipment that are used by engineers in the wood or metal workshop and this equipment include the marking out tools the driving tools the cutting tools the holding tools, the measuring tools, and the boring tools. Marking out tools. Marking out tools are basically tools that are used to mark from one distance to the other on the materials that are about to be cut out for construction. For example, you are going to be constructing a stool. So there should be a certain distance for the legs of the stool. So these distances should be measured or should be marked out from the piece of wood that will be using to construct this tool. So use this marking out tools to mark out the distance on the material that is about to be cut out. And we have different types of this marking out tools. We have punches, we have dividers, we have compass, we have describers, and so on. Then the driving tools. Engineering components that need to be tightly held together require the use of one form of fastener or the holder. The equipment used to achieve this are called driving tools. Examples of these driving tools are the hammers, screwdrivers, spanners, and mallets. 
Next, we have the cutting tools. These tools are used to cut metallic or wooden materials in the workshop. Examples of these tools include chisels, files, saws, planes, and so on. Then, the holding tools. Holding tools, they are tools that are used to hold work pieces together on the bench. Examples of these holding tools are the bench vise, the bench hook, the lathe chalk, the tongs, pliers, clamps. Then the measuring tool. A measuring tool, as the name implies, is an equipment that is used for measurement. Examples are steel rule, tape rule, the micrometer screw gauge, the vernier caliper, the protractor, and so on. And finally, we have the boring tools. Boring tools are tools that are used to make holes in our materials. We have the drill bit, we have the brace, we have the gimlet, and we have the brothels. This are boring tools that we have and with this we have come to an end of this session bye